Today I'm going to show you the normalizer component that I've built recently. First of all, let's go and um, install it. I've got it. Ma I've made it available on my SCAR drive here. So we'll click this, download. If we open that file, this is a zip file at the moment. Here we go. If I uh, double click the MSI, this should install it. You may just have to wait for a minute. I'm, I'm running this on virtual PC, so it might be a little bit slow, but bear with me. Okay, here we go. There you go, it's installed. Okay. So, uh, now I'm going into integration services. I've got a package here that I've started to build. You'll see at the moment it's got one data flow and an OLEDB source component. And you'll also notice from the connection manager at the bottom that um, this is pointing out AdventureWorks on my local SQL Server instance. If I go into this thing, I've got a SQL statement here. If I hit preview, there isn't much data coming back. I've limited the data for demonstration purposes. Very simply, um, we have uh, four columns. We have a sales order number and an order date. And you'll see that the sales order number and order date is repeated for many of these rows. So SO49169 combined with that order date is there three times. And the next sales order number is there twice. The product names, though, and the quantity for those product names are different in each case. So we do have five distinct records here, but only two distinct orders. So if I click OK on that, in order to use a normalizer component, I need to uh, add it to the toolbox. <coughs> so if I click Choose Items, again, this might be a little bit slow, but hopefully not. it won't take too long. Go to Sys Data Flow Items, scroll down, there's my normalizer component. Hit OK and it's been installed for us here. I'm going to drag the normalizer component onto the uh, working area and hook that up to my source component and you'll see that uh, we get a validation error. So if I go to the error list it says the input, in, in all that lot you will see it says the input needs to be sorted and that's true in order for the normalizer component to work the input does need to be sorted if it's not, then it can't derive all the metadata that it needs for its outputs. So I'm going to delete that data path, drag on a source component, a sort component, pardon me. Hook that up. And I'm going to sort on sales order number and order dates because those are the fields uh, that are repeated, that have repeated values in them. OK, and that, if I hook it up. OK, connect it to our normalizer component, and you'll see now that uh, the normalizer components has validated. In order to demonstrate this I'm really going to have to output some data so I set up a row count component. Uh, I'll just create a variable for that. I'm going to need another, there we go. So if I select that variable for that one I'm going to need another row count component. You'll see why in a second. And there we go. So that's, that's those configured. So if I go to the normalizer components and hook this up to um, my row count, you'll see that there are two outputs from it called detail and master. And master contains the deduplicated uh, redundant data. So I'm going to hit master there. You'll see I have one output going to a row count component, and we'll hook the other one up to that one. OK, I'll add some data viewers onto this as well, so we can have a look at the stuff flowing through here. OK, done. I'm going to execute. And we have data flowing through the sort components. 
side of that out, you'll see those are the five rows I uh, looked at earlier. If I detach that, the data is going to flow through the normalizer components, and you'll see that we have five rows going to going down the detail output, and we have two rows going down the master output. So if I take a look at the data in there. So the data view we're looking at at the moment, this one here, is the mas is the one on the master output, and you'll see it's deduplicated. Uh, the redundant data, we just have two records for the sales orders. And the detail output has five records, uh, one for each product name and order quantity. You will also see that uh, in the master output we have this field called a link ID which uniquely identifies each record. And in the detail output we have um, a link back to uh, the same ID that is in there. So it's a bit like a foreign key if you like and you could use that in your destination if you wanted. So if I detach those, everything runs through successfully. And that's basically it, that's what it does, but just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to take off the uh, where clauses in here. So we should have a lot more data flowing through this time. Okay, so we've got 121,000 rows, and you'll see the normalizer component normalizes that pretty quickly. That's, we don't really have a performance issue here. Okay, you'll see we've got 31,000 rows going to the master and 121,317 going to the detail. And of course, the number of rows in the detail should always equal the number of rows coming out of the source. But we can't be absolutely sure that it's successfully deduplicated all the master records. So, just to uh, double check that, what I'm going to do is drag a couple of other things on here. I've got a multicast. I'm going to hook that up to there. The multicast I'm going to take into the sort component. Now I'm also going to drag on another sort component. And I'm going to, again, sort on sales order number and order date. But this time I'm also going to click the remove rows with duplicate sort values checkbox. Click OK on that. Uh, just to terminate this flow, I'll just use a union all on this occasion. And let's hit this. The data is flown out of the source again through both of those sort components. If I hit detach on all of these data viewers, we'll see it run through to completion. Okay, we have 31,465 rows in the master output, and that's exactly the same as the number of deduplicated rows coming out of the sort component that we just added. So we we know that um, the normalized components successfully um, denormalized that data for us. Okay. That's all I really want to show. I hope that's been useful. I hope you get some use out of the normalizer component. Thanks very much.